Welcome back to video number three of our series where we're starting to get in the wonderful world of Azure. All right, so this is actually a really important video. I'm gonna warn you now, if you skip certain parts of it, just keep in mind, we are setting certain things up that will impact billing statements. So if you don't know what you're signing up for, you need to be making sure you're reading everything, okay? I'm gonna explain that portion when we get there. We're gonna be deleting the instance right after we're doing it, but I just want you to be aware, this is when we're gonna start actually getting into things where we're starting to do things that would impact your credits if you're doing the free account or potentially would be billed depending on how much you use it. Um, before we do that though, I did wanna take some time just to, you know, for those of you who do plan to use this uh, for actual personal use and are just curious about cost management and stuff like that. If you go to the cost management and billing uh, portion of Microsoft Azure portal, you can actually see all the different things that are available to you. So most of these different services will have some type of pane like this where you can see invoices, you can see payment methods, partner information, cost analysis for at least the billing stuff. But I just wanted to give you an idea to of how much you potentially could be spending uh, based on what you're doing. So for example, I have a SQL database. I also have, um, well, actually I have a SQL database, a Cosmos database, a data factory now, uh, Key Vault. I actually, <laughs> weird enough, I did Visual Studio Code Spaces. So this is apparently Visual Studio Online. It's pretty neat. I'll show that one day when we get there. I've done virtual machines and stuff like that. Honestly, it's not that much. I mean, really for me, I, I mean, I, I feel like I have a lot of service. I mean, I know it's not that much, but right now for this month, I'm only gonna be spending about $30. I'm probably gonna be spending more next month just because I subscribed to a few more services. And then I also did like a $25 one that was like by default. So um, if you wanna support the channel, go to Patreon. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I don't think it's that bad, but you know, I think just the the, the fact that you can get a bunch of these tools and, and stuff like that, I mean, it really does have a huge benefit for it. So, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. I, I don't personally think this is a lot, but you know, I, I've looked at other services before where they'll charge you like $80 a month for like one thing. And this is like, I'm getting like nine different services for basically 40 bucks a month. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, uh, but now that you at least have an idea of, of kind of just looking at your cost and where to get them, you can also do your invoices as well too. So if you wanna see your invoices, so you can see I didn't spend a lot when I should have. And then also you can see, uh, you know, just different things. You can do programmatic deployment. It's interesting. You can do cost analysis. So this is kind of neat. It'll help, I guess, analyze your cost and you can, you know, see where it is, uh, what's taking so much, and then, you know, just different things like that. You can set budgets if you want, so you can actually set budgets. So that's that's nice. They also provide recommendations as well. So if there's things where maybe you could, you know, save some money on it, they they try to give you an idea of what, what they look like and stuff like that. So pretty cool, um, but really, uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating an instance of a SQL database. So uh, I'm assuming you are in your Azure portal. And if you are in your Azure portal, then what I want you to do is I want you to go to your pane and go to SQL database. If you are at the home portion, you should, well, you might see it up here. If you don't, then you just wanna go to all services and then from here, you can see all the different categories of services. SQL database will be in the databases category. And from here, you will see all of the database options that are available to you. There's different databases. There's databases that do different things. It really depends what you wanna do. Um, there is a SQL virtual machine. So you can actually do a, a virtual machine with a database. You can also create data factories. So I created this one this morning, SQL Server, stretch databases, elastic pools, and all sorts of stuff. Honestly, it's just one of those things when, when you're ready to go there and start exploring those particular topics, you're just gonna have to read the documentation a little bit. 
and just see what exactly that service is. I mean, that's usually what I do now when I, I see a lot of this. But in this case, we wanna do SQL database. And you can already see that I have one. So I actually have one for stock financials and stuff like that. So this is where I'll stream quotes and stuff like that from some of the APIs that I work with. It's pretty neat. We'll be doing that in one video at some point. But if you wanna add a new SQL database, you can go up to add. And then from here, this is normally uh, the first page. So there's always kind of like these different categories of steps that you have to do. In this case, we're doing the basic steps. The first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to basically specify your subscription. So who are we billing it to? I have a pay as you go subscription. So I just make sure that's selected. And then you're going to have to choose a resource group. So if you don't have a resource group, because more than likely you won't your first time, you can just go right here and do create new. And then you just need to provide the name of your resource group. So it can be Bob, it can be Alex, it doesn't matter. You want it to obviously be something meaningful, but you do need a resource group so that way you can identify where this particular SQL database is going to belo uh, belong to. So I have one for this one and I have this one. So I do coding tutorials, so we'll put that in this. And then from here, you need to provide a database name. So we'll call this, I don't know, stock data. So once you do stock data, then that's the name of the database. Additionally, you're gonna have to define a server. Now, more than likely, you don't have a server starting out, so you wanna do create new, and then you're gonna need to provide your server name. So say, for example, I want it to be Alex server. I could do that. Well, we'll call it this, Sigma code server, something like that. And then keep in mind this one, you're gonna to need to find an admin login. So like a username, a password, and then another password to confirm it. And then you need to specify your location. You can do recommended if you'd like, but in my situation, I already have a server, so I don't need to do another one. But if you don't, you just wanna make sure you do the click okay down at the bottom. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so then from here, I have my trading robot server. And then there's this option for elastic pool. This is basically just a different, more cost-effective solution. I don't have that one on by default, so I just turn it off. This is where things get important. Don't skip this step. Configure database. You need to be really careful. Because <laughs> you see right now how it's set up? It's charging you 380 bucks a month. We don't want that. So this is a provisioned uh, database. So that means it's pre-allocated and you're billed per hour based on the vCore configuration. More than likely, you're gonna want serverless. So this is something that kind of auto scales based on how much you're using it. What you can then do is you can configure what is the max vCores and the min vCores. So again, I mean, I, I put it right around here. I, I try to stay more in the minimum side of things, but you can see once I change this configuration, my costs go down dramatically. So at this one, the estimated storage cost per month is $4.78. And then additionally, I have a V-score per second, which is 0.000145 USD. Additionally, you can change some of the, the configurations so you can do Gen 5, they have M series and then FSV2 series, but you have to make sure you select the right tier and region. These are very expensive. That's the latest and greatest. So most time you don't need that unless you're doing something really, really crazy. But I, I find that this one tends to work fine. Um, I, I really haven't had any issues with it. You can also change the database size if you want. So I can go all the way up to maybe say like 100 gigabytes. But then keep in mind, as you raise that, your costs per month are gonna go up as well. So kind of think of it like, uh, what is the word? Microsoft OneDrive, drive, right? So I think the one I did before was like 50 gigabytes, or maybe I did 100 gigabytes. But it, again, it wasn't too much. I was okay with it. But keep in mind that obviously the more database that you're trying to go with, it's gonna be more. Additionally, there are some, there's a hyperscale option. Again, this is extremely expensive. And then you have business critical, which is even more expensive. 
normally general purpose is fine. So again, unless you're doing something very specific, general purpose should be fine. Serverless should be fine. You should try to minimize your V cores. You should really try to start smaller before going up necessarily. And then again, if you're ever worried about it, you can always delete it. Okay, so you can apply these configurations, so that's good. Next, you're gonna go to networking. And then from here, uh, configure network access for codec and connectivity for your server. The configuration select below will apply to uh, selected server. So um, allow Azure services and resources to access the server. This is on by default. That's okay for the most part because a lot of times you wanna be able to access your server from other resources. So again, there might be more specific situations where you might not want that, but again, normally that's okay. You have some additional settings. So data source, do you wanna start with a blank, uh, blank database? Do you wanna store restore from a backup or do you wanna use a sample uh, data to populate your new database? I just do none, I don't really care about it. Uh, database collation defines the rules that sort and compare data and cannot be changed after database creation. The default database collation is SQL Latin one. Just leave it to default unless again, you have a very specific reason. Additionally, you can enable advanced data security. So you have a free trial. Keep in mind, if you do the free trial, then it's $15 USD per month after that, um, per server per month. So just keep that in mind. Again, it, it's a nice feature. I personally just turn it off for the time being. And then you can also add tags. So for example, I can say uh, true. So th this is like tags where again, it's just more metadata where if you need to easily identify a bunch of resources that might fall under a particular uh, topic or something like that, then this is be a nice, easy way to uh, categorize maybe even related to billing. So I have different tags based on different things. So I can say, oh, I want, you know, project. Oh, it's, it's for uh, the data project, right? Data project. So just different things like that. After that, you can do review and create. So this is your final summary before you actually click go to create that resource. And so uh, again, wanna make sure that you look over it one last time just to make sure everything's good, no confusion. And then from here, usually you're good to go. And so you can either go, you, if you want, you can even go back and, and adjust some of the settings that maybe you defined if you're looking at it like, oh, wait a minute, I don't want that anymore. But from here, you can then do create and it's gonna start uh, doing your deployment. Now, depending on the service you're going with, it can take a few minutes. So I did a Cosmos database this morning. It was about seven minutes, but trust me, that is small compared to other things. Very small. And then also too, you can even download some of the stuff for endpoints and stuff like that. It's, I mean, it gets really, it gets pretty crazy just like how much you can do about with this. You can do templates, so you can even have JSON strings to service templates if you wanna use this one. You can set the parameters, you can have scripts. It's a whole little world of things that you can do. When we get there, we'll get there, but for the time being, you know, we'll leave that. So the resource is done, so that wasn't too bad. I think that was like maybe a minute, if that but let's go to our resource. Yay, so now we can see our resource. We can see different things about it. Um, so the neat thing about the SQL database is there's actually certain things you can do from within uh, the Azure portal. So you can actually query editor. I mean, you can actually uh, query it from here too. So uh, I, I didn't know this. I thought this was kind of cool, but uh, not that one. I'll show you in a second. I can't remember if that was it. No. No. Hold on. There we go. No matter how many times I enter it in, it still never works. <laughs> but one thing is you can actually run queries from here too. So you could do like select star from 
XXX, right? So this is pretty neat. I didn't know this was in here until I started really looking at it. But you can see right now we have a very basic database. We don't even have a table in it. But, you know, we could actually, if we wanted to, we could actually run it and then you're going to see stuff like this, which is there's nothing there. So what am I supposed to do? Additionally, you can see, yeah, that's fine. You can also integrate it with other platforms. So things like uh, integrating it with Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate. So this is kind of neat too. You can also diagnose and solve problems. So if you're having connectivity issues or backup and restore, you can go here and a lot of that stuff is right there for you. You can see your tags. You can do quick starts. So this is nice when you need to get in the world of documentation. So there's Azure Data Studio, which we will talk about in the next video, uh, how to integrate it, connection strings, pricing details. You know, there's a lot of resources out there. So normally it's just a matter of finding it. It's not a question of it's, if it's there or not, it's more about finding it. You can also do some settings so you can actually do some configurations if you'd like. You can do things like you can change the configuration from like general purpose to hyperscale. So this is again, going back to that idea that, you know, you can customize this however you want. I mean, you can change it after the fact in some cases, but don't feel like you're stuck with this configuration you know, once it's like that, it's you can actually uh, do some other things. You can do geo replication, connection strings. This is really important, really important. So you can get your connection strings here. You can download the drivers. You know, you name it, they usually have it. You can sync it to other databases. You can add Azure search. Properties, locks, export template, stream analytics. I mean, it's just, it's amazing all the different things you can do with it. And this is just one particular service. I mean, you start getting into other services, it's even more detailed. But at this point, you've, you've done a service. So you actually now have a database that you can start using, which is pretty cool, I think. But... Um, what you're going to be doing from here is now what we can do is we can start connecting to it and we can actually start doing some other stuff like that. But we're going to save that for the next video just because that's its own little beast and we're going to have to download, install some stuff and always that kind of fun stuff. And then we'll talk a little bit about Microsoft Azure Data Studio. So I will actually recommend that to people who are interested in, in learning a little bit more about it. And then once we've done that and uh, we've created our database, we are then going to go through the process of actually creating another database, but we're going to be a little bit more specific. And then we're going to integrate that database into Azure Data Studio first. And then from there, we're going to start integrating it into our little project. And then that's where the fun begins. And then we're going to play with that one. Then we're going to do the Azure Cosmos database. And then after the Azure Cosmos database, we're going to do the data factory and all sorts of fun stuff. So get ready. It's going to be fun. But if you have any questions at this point, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Um, again, if you want, I would tell you to delete because <laughs> personally, I'm going to delete this database. So you can delete it if you want. Normally, when you delete it, you got to put in the name and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, Again, any questions, you know, put them down below and then otherwise we will see you in video number four.